I think analogies are a very powerful way to communicate uh, certain ideas. And this idea, luckily, is not complicated at all, but I like to use an analogy because um, it's a medical analogy, and I like medicine a lot. <laughs> so everyone here knows about the human body. You don't have to be an AP bio teacher or a doctor to know that the human body is composed of many different organ systems. And each of these organ systems has to be functioning properly in order for the entire body to be healthy. Also, each of these organ systems are um, composed of different organs, tissues, and cells, which also must function properly. If you think about it, this is very similar to the economy. The economy is also composed of many different organ systems, which we call sectors. And those sectors have to be functioning properly for the entire economy to be working out, to be working well. Um, so if we look at the analogy further, the sectors are divided into, into companies, organizations, and at the cellular, cellular level, into employees. So one uh, obvious thing would be skin would be analogous to the defense sector, right? Because both protect the body or the economy from harm. I want to make it a little more interactive. So um, can anyone guess what the bone system, the skeletal system would correspond to in the economy? Infrastructure? Nice. Infrastructure, yep. Uh, it's a loose analogy, so you can feel free to, maybe something I haven't thought of would work too. But uh, how about circulatory system? Transportation. Maybe it's too obvious an analogy, which is a good analogy. But uh, so what drives circulation? What drives, what pumps movement in the body? It's the heart. What pumps movement in the economy? Money. That's close. I was thinking of that one, but actually I use energy. Right? Energy drives transportation and a lot of other things. How about the liver? That sector? What? All right. Almost. Uh, I use healthcare, both clean the body and the economy. Uh, the brain would be the financial sector, um, the tread, the, you know, the tread, the Fed, the Wall Street, etc. Uh, uh, sure. In recent years, we've had a lot of brain damage, but if, every, if everything was supposed to be working well, it would be it would be uh, okay. <laughs> the lungs are incredibly important, right? The lungs breathe life into the into the body. So I use education. I think education breathes life into the economy. And if you know, the economy can no more function with a collapsed education system than the body could function with collapsed lungs. So thank you all for, be, you know, thank you all for being the lungs that breathe life into the economy. Um, though the, the one system that is most important in determining the overall size and strength of the economy or the body is the muscular system. And in the economy, that's the science and engineering sector. Case in point, Two part-time engineers about 100 years ago, named Orville and Wilbur, effectively began the aviation industry, which now employs 11 million people and contributes $700 billion to the US's GDP alone. Um, I know most of you are in education or science and engineering, so hopefully you're okay with this anal these analogies. But just in case somebody wasn't in one of these sectors, I didn't want to speculate as to what the appendix or the excretory system would be. <laughs> So a lot of the goals of uh, countries uh, and funding sources, which is important for people in involved in getting funding for projects, is economic growth, right? Strengthen the economy. By this analogy, the way to do that is to promote the growth of science and engineering muscle, right? To drive the economy, to, to make forward movement. Now, a lot of economies look like this. Though they have enthusiasm and, and they want to make a big effort, Clearly this, this, this kid has no muscle, or <laughs> has very little muscle. So we want to be able to grow the economy from this state to this guy, who, uh, <laughs> who is actually the, the world's strongest man. Uh, he's from Poland, uh, so shout out to the Polish team. <laughs> <laughs> so my um, ICEF 2005 project, um, was very similar to this. Like if you look at the slides, they're somewhat similar. I just changed a few, uh, a few words. Uh, I wanted to strengthen the body, and the way to do that was to coax stem cells to become muscle tissue. That was my project, and this was me six years ago, about 30 pounds heavier. And uh, it, was, it was a great project because I learned quite a bit about stem cells, which, you know, everyone knows stem cells as promising current and potential treatments for ailing conditions in the body. Does anyone know why stem cells are, are you know, so, so much in the news media, why they're so cool? There's two, two properties in particular. Yeah? You can teach them to do anything. 
Right, so that's, that's called potency. Um, you have pluripotent stem cells which can become any other type of cell. There's another quality of stem cells that, that's prized. Yeah? That, I mean, that's, that's true. Uh, that's also a quality of cancer cells though. We don't like that. Uh, but uh, they self-renew. So they, they keep renewing themselves um, for the most part. So if you look at this, these stem cells, they, different, they can differentiate into uh, tissue-specific stem cells and then uh, into fully differentiated adult cells. And this specialization process is governed by a few factors, including the DNA within the cell, the genetic, genetic and epigenetic programs, the uh, soluble factors that the cells are exposed to, such as hormones and chemicals, and environmental cues, such as what the body demands at that time. If there's a wound, a lot of stem cells will go and try re repairing that wound. And adjacent cells, and this was the focus of my project in 2005. Adjacent cells have been proven, uh, if you, if you co-culture your cells, your stem cells with adjacent cells, sometimes the cells, the stem cells will transdifferentiate or go in, you know, they're, they're highly plastic, they'll become a cell type that they aren't supposed to become. And that's interesting because the adjacent cells, just like, just like humans are known by the company they keep, stem cells are known by the company they keep too. Back to humans, stem students, I believe, are equivalent to stem cells. Um, you have, uh, I, was, I was really happy that stem played a role in both, in both uh, the cells and the students. I was like, this is a great analogy. So in any case, the, you know, stem cells are obviously a promising treatment for the body. Stem students, I think, are a promising treatment for the economy. And the reason is, if you think about it, STEM students have both qualities of STEM cells. They self-renew. Every year there's new high school students. Um, and they're potent. You know, high school students haven't differentiated yet. They go to, they go to college. Um, they can decide to study aviation, business, science. And then they fully, finally fully differentiate into pilots, businessmen, or, or scientists and engineers. And their, their specialization is also governed by a few factors including the genetic program which becomes parental influence, that's a big factor. Uh, soluble factors become personal factors. So like stem cells, that, that also includes hormones. Anyone here who is a teenager knows that hormones play a role. But also interests are, it would be the chemicals. Environmental cues would be societal cues. But unfortunately, unlike stem cells, um, the environmental cues like, unlike stem cells, students do not necessarily go where the economy needs them because often there's a misalignment between what the economy needs and what the economy rewards. So instead of body demands, this is profitability and prestige generally. But adjacent cells is what I'm focusing on and I think is a very key, um, key factor. Basically it's peer influence, right? Peer to peer influence. I think that's very important because anyone who's been a teenager, and I think all of you have, hopefully at some point, if you haven't, you should let me know because you know, I'd love to do research with you or on you. <laughs> Peer influence is real important because people care about what their peers are doing. They care about what their peers are thinking. Right now, we, we have more profitability, prestige, and peer admiration are more easily won in a field or on a stage or a court than in, in the science fair. Uh, and that, there's some signs that that's changing with this administration and a couple other, um, I mean, great sponsors like Intel who, who, and Society for Science and the Public, which do things like this, and all of you, obviously. The size, strength, and health of the international economy depends on our science and engineering muscle. STEM students will be integral in growing this muscle. And peer-to-peer -peer encouragement, motivation, and guidance is an important tool to coaxing STEM students to fully differentiate, like stem cells, into produ productive scientists and engineers. And fortunately, to that end, many peer-to-peer -peer resources exist and are widely available. So thank you, and if, if anyone has questions, I'd be happy to take them.